In this video, I made my e-bike trailer solar punk and it's awesome. All right, so a couple of years ago, I wanted to do a welding project to keep myself in practice, and I decided that I would try to make an e-bike trailer uh, for my bike so I could carry things around, carry cargo and stuff like that. Uh, my immediate idea was to go to the thrift store and see if I could find one of these kitty e-bike trailers, and I did find one, and it was thankfully made of just normal steel. So I picked that up, and I put together a basic schematic for what it is I wanted to do, and the idea was to extend the original frame, and then build around that so I could have some sort of weather shielding that was a little bit better than just fabric. Now, I welded that together, and I ended up with this, and... It's, uh, yeah, that's okay. That's pretty much the platform even now. I've just added on a base and essentially like an exoskeleton that I could strap things to. This ended up being a really nice welding project and I am actually pretty proud of how functional it is and it's not as heavy as I thought it would be either. Now, in terms of the battery stuff, I want to start with a warning classically. Do not copy anything I do in this video unless you are a professional and also don't copy the anything I do that involves smoke and soldering and melting plastic, please never ever do that. I have been doing it since I was a little kid, which means I've already accepted my fate and that I'm going to die of several illnesses probably because of it. Don't copy me. So, step one, we have to talk about the design of this e-bike trailer. What was the goal? There's kind of two methods. You can either have a charge on the go situation where panels do go directly into a charge controller into your bike's battery. In this case, I didn't want to risk messing around with my bike's charger, so instead, I'm going to be offloading the charging to this Renogy power bank that broke on me for the second time. This thing clearly has an issue where the inverter in it is not specced correctly, and it would just die whenever it felt like it. So I'm going to be taking it apart, getting it working again, and then swapping out its inverter for one that I thrifted online for like $10, which is pretty good. Um, don't open power banks, especially if you don't know what you're doing. You have to be very careful about these sort of things. If anyone's curious, I'm going to be keeping all of the charging and discharging circuitry as well as the lithium iron phosphate cells that came in this thing. This thing is about 300 watt hours total, which is something like half of my e-bike's total battery. So in true hypothetical, I could get 50% more range if I can 100% charge this with my e-bike solar panels that you'll see later. This is me just trying to take a look at whether or not the inverter is going to fit and realizing that I am definitely going to have to cut open this uh, power bank in one way or another in terms of the plastic. And my solution to that is a, a horrible idea. But before that, I need to get soldering and put some cables together. So here I've got the panels that I will be attaching eventually. I've got all kinds of giant gauge wire all over the place. I definitely ended up having way too much slack by the end of this project, but I don't know, it's always better to have extra wire in case I need to change something or run wires in a far direction or something. Right, so this is probably a good time to discuss for a moment um, what I mean when I talk about solar punk, if you've never heard of that before. There are a lot of people that could educate you on the idea, but it's an idea of, you know, in a, a, a post-capitalist, a sort of uh, punk, you know, counterculture response to the way that people perceive climate change and the way that people are ignoring it too. Um, I could have bought a bunch of brand new things to do this project. I could have bought all new wires, all new power banks. I could have bought a new trailer. But instead for this, I decided as much as possible to reuse things I already had. And not to mention the end goal of this has always been to get me off of the grid as much as possible. I'm not trying to like run away from society or anything, but not even 60% of the energy, not even 40% of the energy in Colorado is generated through renewable energy. More than half of the energy is still generated by coal power, which is just awful. Speaking of awful, I have to wear a mask while I do this. This is a stupid idea. Never copy this. Um, instead of buying a Dremel, I'm, I just have a dedicated soldering iron for melting plastics instead. It looks awful, and it is also awful for you. Do not do this. But it does work and allowed me to carve out a space to put this inverter into the power bank. So I'm going to be carving through all of this stuff, trying to make room, and uh, 
It works out for the most part eventually, just probably took several years off of my life. Now I'm at the point where I'm trying to reassemble this thing with the pre-existing screw mount so that way it holds itself together solidly. Um, this inverter is going to plug in where the previous inverter did, except this time this inverter is almost guaranteedly not going to destroy itself as quickly as the previous one. Right, and there was a first time test. The power bank seems to work pretty well. Now, I've been doing this project throughout the extra time I have after uh, the school day every day, so I'm, I'm literally in pajamas for half of this. Just accept that. Um, when I first built this trailer, it was always my goal, long before I even knew what the word solar punk meant or that uh, the things I were doing would be aligned to that ideology at all. Um, I just like slapping solar panels on things, which again doesn't make something solar punk. You have to do these things with intention, knowing that you're trying to deal and reckon with a system that doesn't work for crap, and you, that's the countercultural part of it. So uh, I already have screw mounts for these solar panels because even years ago I wanted to do this with this trailer because I thought it would be a cool idea, even just for the engineering aspects of it. Now that I'm older, I understand that a lot of the problem is a systemic one, one that we have to consciously deal with and grapple with in our own ways, and as much as possible, I like to try and embody those ideas. So, uh, just classic screws. Uh, people who are informed will probably know that I probably should have put lock washers on those. That was stupid. I'll probably have to do that later. So the panels uh, mount on pretty nicely to this. I have this weird wooden chuck in the middle to kind of keep them from flapping around too much and, you know, hurting them long term. Um, I definitely had way too much slack in terms of wire. Here I am zip tying like an absolute madman trying to make sure I can fit any of these wires into the actual trailer themselves. Right, and uh, here's the power bank in the trailer. Uh, looks like everything is wired up correctly and things are going to be working out pretty okay. And the hope is that this can, in fact, charge the battery to the extent that I would like. Now, I did make uh, one slight mistake, which I can't control. Uh, we are in the middle of a noticeable snowstorm and it has been snowing on and off for a few days, so I have not been getting much sunlight at all. But I still went outside and tried my best to check to see if I was getting any charge from these panels. So I left the trailer out during a snowy day, completely overcast, and when I came back home, uh, it started at zero, and when I came back home, it was at 9%, uh, which is very little and awful, but it's on an awfully snowy day, so I imagine a day with better sunlight would do a lot better. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to like the video if you liked it and get subscribed if you're interested in watching more content like this. Um, moving forward into the spring and summer, I'll get a better understanding of how well this system is actually working out and I'll be 3D modeling a mount for the battery as well so that way it stays a lot more stable in the back. Um, until then, I'm actually pretty happy with just 10% charge on a very, very snowy, overcast and cold day. Um, I'm actually impressed that this idea will work to the extent that I think it will. So um, thank you again for watching. Take care. Have a good day.